this guy's garage. Like and subscribe. The committee resumes its study of innovation, science, and research in recycling plastics. It sounds like a, a lot of the issues is that we don't have the infrastructure uh, to properly become that plastic superpower that I think we, we uh, are destined to become if, uh, if, uh, if we had the infrastructure for the, the plastics industry. I understand that the Canadian Infrastructure Bank is not fit for purpose to help our recycling infrastructure. Would that be accurate, yes or no? I don't know that I can make a comment on whether it's fit for purpose. I think that um, the challenge for us is... But did you have an application in... I'm sorry, sir, we got limited time. Did you guys apply no, for funding? we don't have an application. We did not apply for funding. Okay, because there's some in the industry are concerned about on how... It's a large amount of taxpayers' dollars, $35 billion, to help the infrastructure that we desperately need in Canada. And that is one area that uh, uh, we are additionally disappointed in the Liberals on how they've mismanaged the infrastructure bank where this is a obviously infrastructure that uh, is benefit for our, our planet and for our economy and for our country and they, they are ignoring the plastic infra infrastructure. Um, how much of Canada's plastic packaging currently falls under the extended producer responsibility EPR? That's a great question. So right now um, by the end of 2026, every jurisdiction in Canada, except for Newfoundland, the Northwest Territories, and Nunavut, will have uh, EPR uh, legislation passed and be operating under some form of EPR program. And that, that's good news. Um, it, but in terms of, the, of some of the, the overlapping regulations and red tape, would you agree that there has been not been enough leadership from the federal government in terms of encouraging harmonization of different standards? You talked about all the different agreements across Canada. It's a kind of a patch uh, uh, work uh, quilt of policies and versus a national one. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's definitely, as an organization, we encourage greater harmonization. We think part of the challenge is that the legislative responsibility lies with the provinces. Um, but certainly there's a role in going forward in terms of a national strategy, particularly when you talk about infrastructure. I think that's where all our organizations that are operating in the space are looking for partnerships to be able to, again, de-risk the investments required. Um, because now we have the material. We are going to be collecting the material across the country uh, in, the, in the coming years. And so we need to make sure that we've got appropriate infrastructure to be able to recycle that material. Very encouraged with your answer there, and um, I, I think most logical Canadians would want us to become that superpower of uh, plastics recycling out there. Um, knowing where our plastics is and storing it properly is a big part of the battle. Um, there was a private member's bill that my uh, colleague Scott Davidson put forward in, um, last year. Are you familiar with it? And it's, it's to do with um, stopping the the heinous um, act of exporting our waste to other countries where we, we have no way of um, confirming how it was disposed of and what it, the end use of it. Are you aware of that primary member's bill that was put forward? I, I am aware of the bill at a high level, not in detail. Okay. Um, do you agree, agree with the idea of Canada not um, exporting its waste? So I think from a circular materials perspective, we're focused on developing domestic markets uh, for the recycling of plastic so that we can more easily transfer it back to our producers for use as recycled content. I would also add that, um, you know, we, through the EPR programs, and I think all, including Econtrepris, are putting together very robust uh, attestation and traceability systems so that we can make sure that the claims being made about the material that we're collecting recycling are, and can be validated. And the, we find that will be easier if we can establish and maintain robust domestic markets for that material. Just got a couple of questions at the end here. My time is running out. Um, how have um, emerging plastic technology and processes already contributed to a more circular economy? Like, is there, um, what, what are the new uh, technologies that would get you kind of excited about uh, plastics re recycling in the future? Well, I think we're in that process right now. I think, um, you know, with our partner, Econtrepris Quebec, we have a request for expression of interest. We're right now going through a technical analysis of what's been brought forward as uh, possible solutions. And I think by early next year, we'll hopefully have a portfolio of different technologies that we want to work with uh, to help us get to that next stage of ensuring that we can recycle all the plastics we're collecting in the various jurisdictions across Canada. You've talked about, uh, um, I think, 
pretty clearly your plans for the future, um, but just to kind of be very concise on um, your vision of how Canada can do more to become a world leader in technology innovation for the circular economy, um, what are the first step? What is the first step that you, if you had a magic wand, that you want the federal government to change a regulation, support for the infra- infrastructure? What is that first step that would help us along that path? Yeah, and so I think, you know, as I said before, I think some investments and partnership on infrastructure would be a huge step forward. I think all the other building blocks are starting to slowly fall in place uh, with EPR regulations being passed across the country. If we can develop a national infrastructure strategy to help build out the infrastructure needed, I think that would be a huge step forward in terms of developing a more circular economy for plastics. Thank you so much for your testimony today. Uh, You began to speak about... uh, value addition in the recycling process uh, and that would go a long way to supporting the circular economy Uh, and you ran out of time so I'd like to hear from you uh, if you could finish your testimony. Uh, If if the plastic actually is uh, being collected and sorted out very well there are three general techniques being used by different countries right now one of the easiest one is mechanical recycling we can have it in any a small city across Canada. It could generate wealth and jobs. And we can simply convert some of the plastic waste being generated in each city to some value-added product. Uh, and uh, sometimes we can improve the physical properties of plastics. You can imagine that a plastic waste, such as drinking water bottle, could be easily converted to an electrical conducting material that can, for instance, absorb electromagnetic wave. That's how we go from a a low-value product to value-added product. Second one, or the second approach, if mechanical recycling, which is the easiest one, is not possible, the countries have started to move towards chemical recycling. The infrastructure and the capital capital investment is higher, but the materials that we can do from chemical recycling basically are value-added product. We can generate some chemicals from the plastic waste that can actually find their market. The third, if not possible, these two, the, some of the plastics are challenging. So the, some European countries, they have started to work on energy recovery. We know that most of the plastic waste are being made from petroleum-based material. They have actually high amount of calories, so they have a lot of energy. Some countries have started to burn this material to generate energy, and from that energy, they start to generate electricity or power. The challenge is that we might have generation of some toxic gases. So we need to have very good filtration system. So high technology is required over there. Some some countries such as Germany are front runner in this area. Thank you. That's that's quite fascinating. You you mentioned um, earlier as well that uh, that countries including Finland are are using um, robotic systems. And now with the increase in in AI and and robotics, uh, could you speak to some of the opportunities th- uh, that might exist in this space? Sure. So uh, I have I have been working with a couple of companies actually in British Columbia. Uh, the major challenge is that when we are lar- working at large scale, human being doesn't work anymore. We need to have the separation of plastic very, very well. And right now, uh, using AI, artificial intelligence has become so important. So some advanced, actually, technologies in this area is using robotic system that can detect the plastics at large scale and separate them. So then these plastics are ready to be sent to the next stage. You talked about some of the problems about recycled plastic. It's not doesn't have quite the qualities that virgin plastic made directly from petrochemicals have but you suggested i think that if 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 we added certain chemicals to that plastic we could use it for other uh purposes and i i mean one thing i read in in some information on you that you're also working on 3d printing of building components, things like that. Is that a way that we could use recycled plastics uh, for uh, materials that would make them as good or better than, than the virgin plastics that we've been producing? It's a very great question. I think we can take two strategies over here. The, a, any company that wants to work in this area should know that if they can process the plastics and reuse it, uh, can they find the uh, target market for that one as well or not, without any additives. So sometimes maybe it's not necessary to add some extra components to improve physical properties. Easily we can process the plastics 
and then maybe use them for some inferior applications. And still, they have their own market. That's part number one. As a second solution, it is possible to add some additives to these plastics to improve their physical properties. First, it would give actually more a value to the product, and second one, it would diversify the market. This, it's the way to go. Particularly, I believe the technology exists, but as per my experience over the last couple of years with some companies, unfortunately, many of them, they don't have expertise in this area. Maybe if there is more connection with the, we have many good actually polymer scientists all across Canada. It would help a lot. I guess I'd just uh, start with you, Mr. Ahmed, uh, just around like if if there is a country that's doing this well which one would you would you pick um, i think uh, germany and sweden and finland they are doing great actually in this area to the best of my knowledge yeah, yeah. so if we were to benchmark one of them you would pick sweden i think they are doing great okay okay uh, Mr. Langland, you talk about uh, regulations. Uh, I know in my own backyard we've got several waste facility organizations that are doing re like cardboard recycling, plastic recycling, and things like that. And there's third-party companies that come in to do that. Now, what's interesting is just around and like an environmental assessment for their own facilities. So when they take the cardboard or they take the plastic away from the waste disposal facility or the or landfill, um, they're bringing it to another location and they're talking to me about the fact that they're being regulated as if they are a landfill and they're having to go through all kinds of regulation um, each year to re recertify and things like that. Is this something that you're finding kind of across the country or is that specific to Alberta? No, I think I think in various jurisdictions it's it's harder and harder to cite lots of industrial developments, but particularly recycling infrastructure. And so it's been one of the challenges that we've launched EPR and we've had to find new facilities. It's been finding appropriate locations to uh, be able to cite and build new infrastructure to meet that challenge for sure. Okay, would you say that that's a like a major impediment to the like this stuff coming online uh, more quickly? Because uh, I know that I've I've met with folks that like want to recycle plastic have a market for the end product but are just like we cannot find a, a place that will allow us to do it it wouldn't be the it would be the top challenge we see and obviously it's a challenge for some companies but i think for us it's um really it comes down to funding are we able to find the appropriate funding to be able to de-risk those investments and can we find technologies and innovation that allow us to um, recycle these plastics. Okay. So wide range of plastics available on the market. Okay. Uh, Mr. Matu Poulin, uh, I'm just, I, I don't know if you're the correct person to ask this. It, it might be a folks beside you. Um, just around energy consumption to, to recycle the plastic and then versus the energy that is available in the plastic. Um, I know that the waste management in northern Alberta, one, like the, the plastic becomes a major feedstock for their energy sources for the for the the waste management more generally, um, they're they're using some of that energy to sterilize their composting that, that they're doing, for example, to so that when when you get your compost back from from the waste management set, center, you're, you're not filling your garden full of weeds or something like that. So, uh, I'm just can you talk a little bit about that the usage of the energy that's available there and then what does it take to then re use to recycle? Is that a net positive or net negative? Well, I think the research proves that m in the majority of cases, um, the carbon footprint of recycled plastic is much better than a virgin plastic, which means that despite all of the steps, as we mentioned, the transport of it, um, the sorting of it, the recycling of it, and then the shipment back to it, it's, it's usually, I mean, it depends on the types of plastic, but around 75% less carbon footprint in recycled plastic. Um, where it becomes interesting is new technologies, as we mentioned, like chemical recycling technologies, which are going to be looking to to break down plastic back to the monomers. Those are going to be very energy intensive. And in that case, there are questions right now that are being asked as if, if there's so much energy and so much carbon that goes into breaking down that plastic. Um, do we Are we moving again the environmental gain from recycling plastic back to creating greenhouse gases? But in the vast majority of physical recycling, mechanical recycling, there is value in recycling it before doing any other type of 
waste to energy or any type of process to it. Okay, so in just in that one instance, there's a large energy, uh, like breaking it back down into its basic polymers is a large energy requirement. Usually does. Is that yeah. a net, is there enough energy in the, in the plastic to consume some plastic to get uh, get recycled plastic out of out of the end is that is that a possibility? It's yeah, an interesting idea. I think I think it again depends where you're doing it. Um, you know, obviously it will depend of your type of energy you're using. That's always the case in carbon footprint, right? So if you're using hydro versus you know um, oil already, then in in the case where you were using oil to produce your energy, then taking plastic to do it could make sense because that's oil. In the sense where you have greener energy in you know either wind or solar or hydro, obviously you would prefer using that energy versus burning any plastics to, to create that energy. And in that case, then maybe the carbon footprint would actually be net positive even for very energy intensive technologies for chemical recycling. How do we as a country uh, up our game with respect to the themes that you've brought up? And there's, there was four particular areas. One was change in policy, change in investment, incentivizing and de-risking. So for the witnesses here, and then we'll go to the witness online, I'm wondering if we can just unpack policy and an example, investment, and, you know, a guesstimate in terms of what that would be. Incentivize an example. De-risk an example. And I wonder if we could start here, and then we can go with, uh, to, uh, uh, finally, to the, uh, to the witness that's online. I'll try to remember the order. So policy... we got policy um, first. Policy first. Okay, let's start with policy. I think one good example of, of what's currently being discussed in Canada is um, mandatory recycled content in some products. Um, we know that to drive the recycling system, you need demand. Um, so, for example, if you're mandating people in some industries to use recycled content where they can, and it has to be done you know, in the right way and not everywhere, but if it's done the right way, then it creates markets for recyclers, and that's what they need to create those investments. So that's a good use of policy. Investment, um, I think we did mention earlier, I think the fund is a great idea. I think right now a lot of recyclers especially don't know where to turn to, specifically to know. Right. Um, so I think having, for example, a fund that's specifically for plastic recycling would be a good option. With lots of money. Hopefully. Lots and lots of money. Yeah. Uh, incentivize. Incentivize, I mean, that's some things that we do, for example, through EPR. Um, as I mentioned, producers have to pay a certain fee um, for the plastic they put on the market. So, for example, what we're doing is that we're the plastic that we want to see, we give a, a lower fee, and the plastics we don't want to see, we put a, low, a, a higher fee. So that's a way to incentivize good behavior. Mm -hmm. um, so I think EPR in itself is an incentive for mm -hmm. good behavior with plastics, um, and that's what's happening across the provinces, but that's one thing we can do. And de-risk? I think the risk, the, the point that, that Alan made was good. Um, a lot of people right now are saying, I would love to install my, a, a, an industry in Canada, but you need to, first of all, the cost of virgin, for example, it's a commodity, a virgin resin. And the problem right now is that the moment the virgin costs go down, then nobody wants to buy any, um, any recycled plastics anymore. So in that sense, maybe they're risking that investment by, yeah. Giving them giving the same value for virgin and, and recycled content. Okay. For